good open debates, respectful debates, where everyone has the opportunity to listen to everyone's opinions on what's going to happen um, with academisation in Greenwich and across the country. Um, I'm going to pass over straight away. We've got several speakers this evening. We've got Nina Calder, who's a parent of Deansfield. Councillor John Farr, he is here this evening. Jess Edwards from the NUT. Um, Pete Sinclair, who's um, a parent of John Rome. And also Eve uh, Light, who's a parent of Halstone. Um, each speaker will be speaking for about 10 minutes. Uh, there will then be an opportunity afterwards for people to share their opinions, ask questions, and um, for us all to listen carefully to each other's opinions in a respectful manner. Okay, so, um, then I'll pass over to you. children at Deansfield Primary. So, not hearing very well at that. Sorry, I'll try to shout. My name is Nina. I'm a parent of three children at Deansfield Primary. Why hold a public meeting? Well, because this process of turning our school into an academy has been running publicly, at least, since February of this year, when the Compass Partnership announced its, first announced its desire to convert. And in all of that time, this is the first fully inclusive public meeting, the first meeting to which parents, teachers, school leaders, governing bodies, council representatives and the general public have been invited. And I think it's worth noting that the government advice to converting schools recommends that they consult with all key stakeholders, including the wider community. So why am I here this evening? I'm here because I love our local authority community school and I want to keep it the way it is. Academisation of our brilliant local primary schools is of serious concern to many, many people. Our focus at this meeting is on Deansfield and Halstow schools and the Compass Partnership, but obviously it's a massive issue for the borough as a whole. There is no problem with our schools. And the decision to convert is a decision which will affect the future of education forever. So what was the argument in favour? At the consultations, parents were told um, that the governing body fully expected this government, and it said future governments, to force schools to convert. Parents had a very clear message, conversion is inevitable and we would be very wise to choose our destiny before it's too late. The government white paper is largely irrelevant. This is not forced academisation, it's a choice, but it's a choice that's been made by the school leadership and the governing body alone. Some people argue that we will still be forced to academise, but to that I'd say only if enough governing bodies choose to do that and our local authority is left unable to support the remaining ones. But rather than being an argument in favour of conversion, I believe that that's a very good argument to reject it. The other main pro-academy argument is one of school budgets. We know that the Compass Partnership will receive roughly £25,000 towards legal costs and roughly another £140,000 towards setting up the trust. We also know there is no additional money available for academies. The squeeze on school budgets will continue, and the fair funding formula will affect all schools, particularly in large cities, but irrespective of whether they are academies or not. So that leaves a chunk of money which previously sat with our local authority, and under an academy will go directly to the school. The leadership have advised that they can procure services directly with suppliers more cost effectively than with the local authority. Okay, let's assume that that's true. Does that apply in year one? What about in year two, year five? And how many schools does it take to make that bargaining power, collect, um, bargaining power effective? One, two, three mats? Is that 7, 14 or 21 schools or more? The school advises that it already operates like a business. But a business, according to the DfE, 
which doesn't need to prove any financial viability until after their application has been approved. We have asked what financial modelling or forecasting has been done, but we haven't had a clear answer. So what does happen when the finances get squeezed even more, and we all know that they will? We will need a corporate sponsor. Fair enough, it might not happen immediately, and for some of us, our children may have left primary school by then. But some of us care about the future of, of education beyond our own use, and some of us feel a responsibility to protect it for the generations to come. And what is all of this costing? Three hundred million pounds worth of taxpayers' money to make the changes. Is it privatisation? We've been told no it isn't, but I'd like to look at that. Our schools will no longer exist as a legal entity. Our school, which currently belongs to the local authority and us, the taxpayer, will be leased to private individuals who are yet to be appointed for 125 years. The government's long-term agenda is to push all schools into corporate sponsorship and for them to be profit-making. If that isn't privatisation, I don't know what is. I think it's naive to think that our school leaders, however well-intentioned, can resist all of these greater forces at work. So why would we academise? And let's remember, there is still no convincing evidence that academisation improves attainment in primary schools. There is, however, evidence which confirms that local maintained schools perform just as well, and in most cases better, than academies. And then there are teachers' pay and conditions, which academies have the freedom to change. I don't understand why a school's leadership would so readily buy into a system which undermines the teaching profession, we have been promised that it doesn't intend to use these freedoms and it doesn't intend to rely on unqualified teachers. But when the money is really tight, where are these savings going to come from? Just like most parents, I want to believe in our school leaders and they may well have the best of intentions. But academising our schools is not in the best interest of teachers. It's not in the best interest of parents. And it certainly isn't in the best interest of our children.